show love, compassion and spread goodwill this Christmas. Drop in number of cases expected in January. Salam Malaysia Madani, I'm Mohana Priya and you're watching Malaysia Tonight. Yang Dipertuan Agung Al Sultan Abdullah Riaya Tudin Al Mustafa Billah Shah and Raja Pemaisuri Agung Tunku Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria have extended Christmas greetings to all Christians in Malaysia. Their Majesties conveyed their wishes through a post shared on the Istana Negara Facebook page today. Al Sultan Abdullah and Tunku Aziza Amina also hoped that this celebration and holiday season would bring peace, prosperity, happiness and well-being to all members of the Christian community in Malaysia. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim urged Malaysians to show love, compassion and spread goodwill regardless of their different backgrounds during the Christmas holidays. Anwar said this while extending holiday greetings in conjunction with Christmas tomorrow via a post on his social media. The Prime Minister in a Facebook posting said the Christmas Day celebration this year can serve as a momentum to show love, kindness, understanding and compassion among each other. He added the celebration is also a time to spread goodwill among the various communities, irrespective of race, religion and background. He said these long-time practices have always strengthened the unity enjoyed by Malaysians. The Prime Minister further conveyed that unity of all citizens is essential for the continuous development of the nation in terms of economic growth, increased investment and the eradication of persistent poverty. Christmas is celebrated on 25th December by the Christian community throughout the world every year. Now, the number of COVID-19 cases is expected to drop next month. Health Minister Datuk Sri Dr Zulkifli Ahmad said the current COVID-19 situation is being monitored based on four criteria, namely the number of infection cases, deaths, admissions to the intensive care unit or ICU, and the burden faced by health facilities, especially hospitals. Speaking at the Pati Amanah Negara National Convention in Klang, Selangor today, Datuk Sri Dr Zulkifli said currently actions taken by the Ministry of Health, MOH, are according to needs and systematic and not only looking at the increased number of cases. He said although some are angry because it is not mandatory to wear a face mask, the MOH will not be influenced by an emotional approach. According to Datuk Sri Dr Zulkifli, what the MOH does is evidence-based, which is subject to the heightened alerts system and that will continue. He said that in the event of major and drastic changes, the MOH will refer to the four criteria set. Yesterday, Dato Sri Dr Zulkifli said that COVID-19 cases recorded in the 51st epidemiological week from 17th to 22nd December increased by 29.5% to 22,413 cases compared with 17,307 cases recorded the previous week. The proposed elections for local authorities must ensure a win-win situation for all races. Parti Amanah Negara or Amanah President Datuk Sri Mohamad Sabu said further discussions and in-depth studies should be conducted to ensure that all races are satisfied and feel secure with the implementation of the elections. In his winding up speech at the Pati Amanah Negara National Convention in Klang Slango today, Datuk Sri Muhammad, who is also the Agriculture and Food Security Minister, said, If chosen by the people, one must work diligently in the interest of the people, not the party. He added that it is also necessary to win the people's hearts and ensure that no one is left behind. The proposal regained attention after the Federal Territory DAP Chairman and Chiras Member of Parliament, Tan Kok Wai, presented it to strengthen democracy in the Federal Territory during its convention recently. Meanwhile, Datuk Sri Mohamad said he believed that the component parties forming the unity government could secure the four states held by the opposition in the next general election. He said this was based on his observation that the unity government has managed to regain the support of civil servants, adding that support from the component parties under Pakatan Harapan and Barisan National will also strengthen the coalition. 
The Malaysian Meteorological Department, or Met Malaysia, has issued a danger level continuous rain warning for several areas in Kelantan and Trunganu from today until tomorrow. In a statement today, Met Malaysia said the areas affected by the rain in Kelantan are Tumpat, Pasimas, Kota Baru, Jeli, Tanamera, Bacho, Machang, Pasiputi, and Kuala Krai. The affected areas in Trunganu are Basut, Setiu, Kuala Nurus, Hulu Trunganu, Kuala Trunganu, Marang, and Dungun. It said a severe level continuous rain warning was also issued for Perlis and several areas in Langkawi, Kubang Pasu, Kota Star, Pokok Sena, Padang Terap, Pendang, Sik, and Baling Kedah, Hulu Perak in Perak, Gua Musang, Kelantan, Kemaman, Trunganu and Jerantut and Kuantan, Pahang, which are forecast to go on until tomorrow. Met Malaysia also issued an alert level continuous rain warning until tomorrow for Yan, Kuala Muda, Kulim and Bandar Baru in Kedah, the whole of Pulau Pinang, Kerian, Larut, Matang, Selama and Kuala Kangsa, Perak and Cameron Highlands and Lipis in Pahang. The video that went viral purportedly of a congestion at an airport is an old video recorded last year at day one bus of the Sultan Iskandar building in Johor Bahru, according to Immigration Director General Datu Ruslin Jusso. In a statement issued today, he denied that, that it was a video on congestion at an airport, allegedly due to the influx of tourists from China. He said that the video that went viral was recorded last year after the restriction on cross-border movement due to COVID-19 ended. The video was recorded during the movement of Malaysians working in Singapore, he said, and denied that the video was recorded at an international airport in the country. Citing records, Dato Ruslin said the average outbound and inbound movement at BSI was 250,000 on normal days and would double during festive seasons. He advised the public against spreading false information as it could cause confusion and anxiety in society. Police arrested two men and a woman suspected to be involved in a murder following a dispute between siblings at a house in Sungai Choh, Rawang, yesterday. Acting Gombak District Police Chief Superintendent Noor Arifin Mohamed Nasir in a statement said the suspects are arrested are aged 29, 32 and 33 years old respectively. Noor Arifin said the initial investigation found that the victim was the boyfriend of one of the suspect's sisters and that the motive of the incident stemmed from a dispute between the victim and one of the suspects. He said the investigation under Section 302 of the Penal Code is ongoing and efforts to locate several individuals suspected to be involved are underway. He said at 11.25 p.m. yesterday, police received a complaint from a 27-year-old local woman stating that around 11 a.m., while at home, she heard disturbances from her neighbor's house. At 5 p.m., the complainant overheard a conversation between her neighbor's husband and brother-in-law requesting help to bury a body. Upon initial investigation, the police discovered the body of an unidentified local man buried in a hole in the bushes. The body was transported to Kuala Lumpur Hospital for a post-mortem examination. Malacca studying proposal to raise water tariff. The Malacca government is conducting a detailed study regarding the proposed increase in water tariff for domestic users in the state before submitting the application to the National Water Services Commission, or SPAN. Malacca Chief Minister Dato Sri Abdul Rauf Yusuf said that the study was crucial to ensure that the upcoming water tariff hike does not burden the people and does not adversely affect Sharikat Ayim Malacca Berhad SAMB. He said that the last water tariff hike in Malacca was done in April 2011.
diselaraskan seluruh Malaysia. Jadi kaedah dia mengikut kemampuan dan hasil daripada negeri tersebut. Pastinya Melaka sedang membuat kajian berapakah jumlah hasil uh, yang akan digunakan untuk mempertingkatkan harga air ini. Dia tak sama dengan negeri lain sebab lagi besar geografi dia lagi besarlah uh, apa kos operasinya. Jadi Melaka juga sedang melihat dan mengkaji dan pastinya satu harga yang tidak membuatkan rakyat akan kita maklumkan. He said this to reporters after officiating the closing of the Mega Surf Pantai Putri 2023 in conjunction with Visit Malacca Year 2024 today. He said that the increase in water tariff is essential to ensure that SAMB does not incur losses while still being able to supply treated water to users in the state. According to SAMB's website, for domestic users or individual meters in the state, the water tariff rates are 60 sen for the first 20 cubic meters, followed by 90 sen for usage between 20 and 35 cubic meters, and 1 ringgit 45 sen for usage exceeding 35 cubic meters. The Perlis Enforcement Office of the Ministry of Domestic Trade and Cost of Living, KPDN, has given the assurance that there will be no price increase for nine controlled items under the 2023 Christmas Season Maximum Price Scheme, SHMMP, effective from yesterday until the 27th of December. Perlis KPDN Enforcement Head Farah Adlina Ropai said that based on inspections conducted at three wholesalers and 107 retailers in the state yesterday, traders complied with the price scheme and displayed pink price tags on the affected goods. However, she said the price of red onions and shallots imported from Pakistan and India is expected to increase between 5 and 6 ringgit per kilogram after Christmas. Pas perai ini, kita tengoklah macam mana kan kita let the market decide. Macam mana kan? Selalunya antara 5 ringgit ke 6 ringgit selalunya lah. Ah, okay, tak banyak beza pun. Mungkin sebabkan faktor cuaca, itu selalu hujan ke kan. Jadi bekalan itu susah nak dapat sikit lah. Tapi di negara polis memang bekalan itu terkawal. Speaking to reporters after conducting the SHMPP inspection and walkabout at a supermarket in Kanga today, Farah Adlina said that KPD and Perlis also carried out continuous advocacy to traders to ensure they always comply with the stipulated trade regulations. Bursa Malaysia is anticipated to stage a rebound next week, buoyed by continuous support from foreign funds and improving economic conditions. Rakuten Trade Equity Research Vice President Tong Pak Ling said, from a technical perspective, the FBM KLCI had failed to surpass the critical resistance level of 1,465, despite several attempts, followed by four consecutive days of decline. It then broke below the 20-day exponential moving average or EMA. However, Tong said as the index managed to hold above its 50-day EMA, the odds of an upside move are increasing. Hence, he believed the benchmark index was still in consolidation mode with a slight positive bias. As such, Rakuten anticipated the benchmark index to trend within the 1,450 to 1,470 range next week, with immediate support at 1,450 followed by 1,440. For the week just ended, Bursa traded mostly lower as investors awaited a slew of economic data from the US to firm up their gauges on the rate and the US personal consumption expenditures inflation report. On a Friday on Friday basis, the KLCI fell 7.87 points to end the week at 1,454.38 points versus 1,462.25 a week ago. Bursa Malaysia also ended the week with a lower turnover of 18.39 billion units worth 12.04 billion ringgit versus 18.88 billion units worth 13.44 billion ringgit the preceding week. Meanwhile, the ringgit is expected to trade slightly higher against the US dollar next week and move between the 4 ringgit 62 sen and 4 ringgit 63 sen level amid subdued demand due to the Christmas and New Year breaks. Bank Muamalat Malaysia Berhad Chief Economist Dr. Muhammad Afsanizam Abdul Rashid said next week is anticipated to be a quiet week as traders and fund managers will be away for the holidays. 
Dr. Mohamed Afzani Sam also said that the economic data would also likely not have a material effect on the currency markets. Meanwhile, SBI Asset Management Managing Partner Stephen Innes said the outcome of the U.S. core personal consumption expenditure PCE price index would drive even more intense U.S. rate cut sentiments and push the greenback lower. He said, however, a higher inflation reading could drive the dollar higher into year-end and possibly send the ringgit back to the 4 ringgit 70 cent level. For the week just ended, the local note traded higher amid positive sentiment in anticipation of global interest rate cuts next year. On a Friday to Friday basis, the ringgit was firmer against the US dollar at 4.6265 from 4.6675 a week earlier. The local unit also traded higher against other major currencies. Hai semua rakyat Malaysia, saya ingin mengucapkan selamat menyambut Hari Nata kepada masyarakat beragama Kristian. Semoga perayaan kali ini disambut dengan penuh keceriaan dan warna-warni. Dalam pada itu, saya juga ingin mengingatkan kepada semua untuk berhati-hati walau di mana saja anda berada. Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday! dead in nickel plant explosion in Indonesia. At least 13 people were killed and 38 injured in eastern Indonesia on Sunday in an explosion at a Chinese-funded nickel processing plant, according to the owner of the industrial park that hosts the facility. The island of Sulawesi is a hub for the mineral-rich country's production of nickel, a base metal used for electric vehicle batteries and stainless steel, and Beijing's growing investment has stoked unrest over working conditions at its facilities. The accident occurred around 5.30 a.m. local time at a plant owned by PT Indonesia Singashan Stainless Steel in central Sulawesi province. A spokesperson for the complex in a statement said that the dead were identified as eight Indonesians and five Chinese workers. An initial investigation showed the explosion happened during repair work on a furnace when a flammable liquid ignited. The subsequent blast caused nearby oxygen tanks to explode as well, according to the official. According to the statement, the fire was extinguished Sunday morning. Hong Kong's cold weather warning entered its sixth day as the city's forecaster on Christmas Eve clocked temperatures as low as 2.9 degrees Celsius in some parts of the New Territories. National forecaster the Observatory on Sunday said the reading taken at Taku Ling, close to the border with mainland China, was a clear drop from a low of 5 degrees logged on Saturday. However, much of the city was enjoying a few more degrees of warmth than those in the north, with the maximum temperatures reaching 16.9 degrees as of midday. The forecaster also cancelled a 16-hour frost warning at 8.15 a.m. No frost was observed on roads and fields in Ta Kyu Ling, but several patches appeared on parked vehicles. Officials said conditions on Christmas Eve would continue to be fine, as a winter monsoon affecting the southern Chinese coast brought cold and dry weather. Forecasters a day earlier said that Hong Kong this year would experience its first cold Christmas in nine years, as previous holidays from 2014 to 2022 had seen temperatures ranging between 14.1 and 19 degrees. Temperatures on Monday were likely to range between 11 and 17 degrees, with slightly lower readings expected in the new territories. The United Nations called Saturday for the urgent rescue of 185 people, mainly women and children, on a distressed boat last heard to be near the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Indian Ocean. Around 70 of those on board are children and 88 are women, according to the UNHCR Refugee Agency in a released statement. 
UNHCR spokesman Baba Baluch told the media that the people on board were Rohingya refugees and said that the agency was appealing to all the coastal authorities in the area to urgently rescue them. Thousands of Rohingya, heavily persecuted in Myanmar, undertake risky sea journeys from Myanmar and refugee camps in Bangladesh every year, trying to reach Malaysia or Indonesia. More than 2,000 Rohingyas are believed to have attempted the risky journey to Southeast Asian countries in 2022, according to UNHCR. And since last year, more than 570 people, including Rohingya refugees, have been reported dead or missing at sea in the region. When it comes to the people currently adrift, the agency emphasised that a bigger tragedy is preventable with timely efforts to save lives. Draw at Anfield is most intense game in 20 years. Stay with us. Now, Arsenal will spend Christmas Day on top of the Premier League after they held title to rivals Liverpool to a pulsating one-all draw at Anfield on Saturday, while Manchester United crashed to a dismal 2-0 defeat at West Ham that piled pressure on Eric Ten Hag. Arsenal took an early lead when Gabriel outwitted Cody Gakpo to head in a floated pass from captain Martin Odegaard in the fourth minute. Liverpool forward Mohamed Salah scored a brilliant equaliser in the 29th minute when Trent Alexander-Arnold found him with a pinpoint long pass. Salah stepped easily around Alexander Zizchenko before unleashing a fierce left foot shot into the net. Salah's goal was his 151st in the Premier League to put him 10th on the all-time list and the hosts had great chances to net the winner. Reacting to the draw, Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta said it was a hard-fought game as both teams displayed strong determination to win it. It was an unbelievable game of football, one of the most intense and hectic games that I have witnessed in 20 years in this league. Um, the quality and the intention of both teams, it was superb to watch it and, and win as a team um, with our boys willing to, to play at that level, have the courage to play at that level, determination and belief to do what we've done here. I think my players deserve big, big credit. A draw was arguably the right result after both sides flexed their muscles to show why they have emerged as the leading contenders to win the title. Chasing a first title since 2004, Arsenal sit one point clear of second place Liverpool heading into the festive period. Meanwhile, Jared Bowen and Mohamed Kudu's second-half goals gave West Ham a 2-0 win over Manchester United in the Premier League as the Hammers briefly moved into the top six. Bowen bundled home from close range in the 72nd minute after a lovely 1-2 with Lucas Paqueta, who played in Kudu's six minutes later to settle the game with a sharp finish. The first half was low on quality and its best chance fell to Alejandro Ganacho in the 35th minute, but the winger lost his balance and shot straight at Alfonso Areola. Bowen broke the deadlock with his 11th league goal of the season, taking Paqueta's dinked ball in his stride before Andre Onana's save rebounded off the forward and into the net. Paqueta then capitalised on Kobe Manu's mistake to set up Kudus, who fired home past Onana to secure all three points for the hosts. West Ham, recovering from a bruising 5-1 defeat to Liverpool in the League Cup in midweek, move up to 6th on 30 points and United drop to 8th on 28 points. Rebecca Welsh became the first woman to referee an English Premier League football match when she oversaw Burnley's 2-0 win away to Fulham at Craven Cottage on Saturday. Welsh, a 40-year-old from Washington in northeast England, was working for the National Health Service when she began her refereeing career in 2010. 
Welch's name was greeted by cheers when read out by the public address announcer at Craven Cottage ahead of kickoff. She rose through the officiating ranks and in 2021 became the first woman appointed to referee a match in the English Football League when she took charge of the fourth tier fixture between Harrogate and Port Vale. Welch was also the first female official to referee matches in the championship and third round of the FA Cup. She had little to do early on during a slow start to proceedings in London on Saturday before Welch's decision to not award a Vitinho handball frustrated Fulham. Fulham defender Calvin Bassey, who was booked after 25 minutes for striking Josh Brownhill, refused to walk towards Welch when signalled by her on three occasions, but eventually approached the referee and was cautioned. The match ended with long-range strikes from Wilson Odebert and Sander Berg that gave Burnley their first win since 2nd December. Big spending and defending champions Al Ittihad's problems continued in the Saudi Pro League as they were beaten 3-1 at home by lowly Al Raid, meaning they now trail table toppers Al Hilal by 22 points. Two goals from Karim El Bakawi and a fine finish from Mohamed Al Dosari meant that Al Raid pick up just a fourth win of a season and now sit in 15th position in the table. The opening minutes of the first half were eventful when a penalty was awarded to Al Raid in the 10th minute due to a foul committed by Al Olayan on Tavares, for which Al Olayan received a yellow card. Upon review by the video assistant referee VAR, however, it was determined that the foul occurred outside the penalty area and warranted a direct red card for Al Olayan, forcing his team to continue the match with 10 players. Karim El Barkawi, who found the net twice, scored a goal in each half, with the first one being on the 22nd minute. Romarinho eventually equalised for the home team from an ego Coronado through ball three minutes later. El Barkawi struck again in the 72nd minute to put the visitors ahead before Mohamed Al Dosari added a goal towards the end of regular time to seal the win. Following their second consecutive loss and fifth in the league this season, Al Itihad's points are frozen at 28, placing them sixth in the standings. Meanwhile, Al Wright's points rose to 16, putting them in 15th place. Saya Hannah Yeo, Menteri Belia dan Sukan mengucapkan selamat menyambut Hari Christmas dan Selamat Tahun Baru 2024 kepada semua penonton RTM. Minute, tanpa henti, 76 minutes non-stop. Transparent and concise. Paparan komprehensif, ringkas dan padat. Saksikan Kanta 744, 744 malam. Berita perdana 8 malam. Malaysia tonight, 8.30pm. And that's it from us this evening in our top story. Drop in number of COVID cases expected in January. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Merry Christmas and thanks for watching. <laughs>